Hi guys, today we're gonna to talk about something that confused the heck out of me when I was first starting with Sony cameras. That's right, the heck out of me. I don't wanna get demonetized by YouTube. It's picture profiles. Let's talk about it. So I'll be demonstrating this on the ZV-E10, which is what I'm shooting on right now because that is pretty much the only thing anyone is watching my channel for at the moment, but this applies to other Sony cameras here is the a7 III, all the a6000. This will demystify the picture profile thing for you if you want to keep watching. Why wouldn't you want to keep watching? So in this video, I'm going to show you examples of each of the picture profiles indoors and outdoors, but let's go into the menu first to see where you can find them. I had to switch to my trusty a7 III to do this and it doesn't have a flip screen, so I have no idea if I'm even recording this. Anyway, let's go into the menus and hope for the best. Hey, okay, we're on page one here of tab one. We move on over to this one here. It is the I have it on set picture profile 10 right now, so I'll just turn that off. Now, this is how it will come on page eight of 11 of the first tab, you will see the creative style standards. Now, that, that is what I was talking about in the creative styles. You have standard, you have vivid. You have portrait, landscape, sunset, black and white, and sepia, if you want to do something like that. But um, for the most part, I will only use either standard or portrait, and you will see examples coming up as to why. But the picture profiles themselves, they are down here. So you leave your creative style in standard, and you go down your picture profile, and now you have picture profile off, or one through 10 and there are variations of all of these things. But as I explain later in the video, they don't have to be variations. You can make them all the same if you want. The main one that you pay attention to here is the gamma. So the gamma, you can have movie, still, cine one, two, three, four, 709, logs, and HLGs. And then in the color mode, and here's the color modes here, and these will change how the camera interprets the colors. Now, can you see me here? Let me see, I have an 85 millimeter on a crop body sensor. So yeah, that's, that's like 135 millimeters, right? Do I look pretty? You can't even focus, you can't focus. Now here's the thing about these picture profiles. These are just 10 options. It's 11 options on some of the cameras that have a cine tone, but we have 10 picture profiles. And this is just a bunch that Sony thinks you might want to use. The fact is you can manipulate any of these picture profiles to match any of the other picture profiles. You could take picture profile one and type in those settings from picture profile one to 10 and they'll all be exactly the same. None of these are written in stone. They're just settings that Sony has put in to help you out or confuse you depending on your point of view. And the main thing that changes in these settings that makes the big difference is the gamma setting and the color setting and the gamma is things like, are you going to do S log or Cine 2 or HLG and the gamma handles exposure. And then the colors, things like BT 2020 or Rec 709, and that handles how the color information is transferred to the camera sensor. Now, in the examples before the color grading, you will see that the log formats are very, very washed out. They're very gray. That's because they take all the color information and smoosh it down in towards the middle so everything looks kind of gray. So that way, later in post, you can spread it out and uh, manipulate the image as much as you want. Now, the fact is, that's what people want to use a lot. They want to use log profiles in cameras that shoot in 10-bit, but this camera shoots in 8-bit, so you may not want to do that. I'll explain that at the end of the video. Now, I'll take you outside to show you each of the picture profiles. Of course, this is not an exact science. I am not recording this in a vacuum. I was outside, and the sun was changing every now and again due to clouds, but you will get a good approximation of what each picture profile looks like when uh, coming straight out of camera and then when a little correction is added by me.
Are you enjoying this so far? Me too. Let's go inside the studio. Now once again a caveat with this, the background lights, the blues, you'll see them sometimes brighter or darker and that just depends on how I'm exposing because each profile requires a different amount of exposure to get it done right. So sometimes I have to turn the lights way up, my key lights, like with the HLG or the S-Log, which will turn the backlights down. Well they'll look like they are dimmer in comparison and I wasn't manipulating the backlights. I just left them the way they are because I'm lazy and I would have been guessing. So bear that in mind. So when you're looking at the footage, like I always say, just focus on my pretty face. Now, if you want my opinion, and of course you do, if you want to do no color grading whatsoever, just straight out of camera, I would go with either Picture Profile 3 or I would use the Portrait in their creative style. I think those two coming out of camera are not so bad. Now, if you want to do a little color grading, go with Picture Profile 5 or 6. Those are the Cine profiles. They're a little bit flatter, but you so you can do some color grading, but uh, it's not, you don't have to stretch the image crazy. Now, I would stay away from the S-Logs for that purpose because the S-Log, it smooshed everything so much, you have to stretch it out. And sometimes when you stretch out 8-bit footage, like that is in the Sony ZV-E1 or all of the Sony cameras basically, except for the brand new ones, the A7S III, the FX3 and the A1. Most of the Sony cameras that we are using these days are still 8-bit. So if you do S-Log footage and you start trying to color grade, you're gonna get little blotches and artifacts and banding and you don't want that. So which is why I say, if you're gonna do a lot of color grading, do what I do. Just be like me, who wouldn't wanna emulate me? Go with the HLG profiles. I like the HLG3. I personally, what I've been shooting on, what you're looking at right now, is a HLG3 picture profile, the BT2020, with a Paul Leeming corrective LUT. Now, that is a paid LUT. I buy Paul Leeming LUTs for all of my cameras. It helps me match my cameras, and it gives me accurate colors. This, it isn't a color grading. It doesn't give you a style. It just gives you technically accurate colors, which is what I'm looking for, and then I can color grade to taste after I apply the Leeming LUT. So the HLG gives you basically all of the dynamic range that the sensor can give you in a manageable format so that when you color grade, the image doesn't fall apart. It is the best thing to do for the Sony 8-bit cameras, in my opinion, and pretty much science's opinion. But another thing I'll say about the HLG, if you're using Premiere Pro or DaVinci Resolve, in uh, if you just take an HLG clip and you drag it to your timeline, it will automatically be converted to Rec. 709 as far as I know, whereas in Final Cut, which is what I use, there's an extra step. You either have to apply a lot like the Leaming LUT, which takes care of it for you, or you have to do a color space override in the settings and I'll show you what that is right now. Here we are in Final Cut. I'm sitting a bit far away from my mic, so sorry about the audio, but uh, when you first drag in an HLG clip into Final Cut, it will 
give you a little warning. It says you're adding an HDR clip to an SDR project. So you need to apply color correction, obviously, because what you have is this ridiculous blown out image. Now what I always do is I just apply a Leeming LUT and uh, let's go with the Sony one, Leeming LUT. I have a bunch of Leeming LUTs and HLG3. Now we are back to normal. But if you don't want to apply the LUT and you want to color grade yourself, what you do is look at this tab here and you make sure it often starts in the basic. You make sure you go down to your settings and then your color space override. See, so it says off. You want to go to Rec 709 because that is what the camera, that's what the, the Final Cut wants to see. So right here, and now you have an image you can work with. So it's converted to Rec 709. Of course, you'll need to color grade this. It's still very washed out, but at least you can work with it. And it's not that crazy blown out image. Now, of course, in DaVinci and Premiere Pro, it just does that automatically for you. So you'll get this gray image, no problem. Clear as mud, don't forget to like, subscribe, uh, ask a question if you got one. Lots of uh, ZV E10 footage coming up, lots of Sony stuff in general. I've got lenses coming in, I got cameras coming in. Oh, guys, guys, we're gonna have a great time. Uh, thanks for watching. Okay, we'll see you soon. Okay, bye bye.